Hi everyone, welcome back to Smug Mug Live. This is episode 24 and it's the wonderful Gavin Hardcastle today. Uh, we'll get to him shortly. Uh, it should be a fairly serious conversation today. You know, Gavin's a very serious landscape photographer. So, um, you know, just bear with us while we get things set up and get ready and let people join the channel. To those of you who are already in the channel, thank you so much, as always, for joining us today. Make sure you give us a little shout out in the comments. It's always nice to see where you're joining from. Uh, and we will get to some of those comments as we go through the today's show. As always, a real help to us on this channel is if you give us a subscription and a little click on that bell notification, that gives us, uh, you know, real good exposure and it supports the channel. So thank you for that. And yeah, we've got uh, a busy week coming up next week. We have, yes, yeah, so, you know, continuing with the shows. So thank you so much. And we will get on with today. Um, hopefully Gavin is with us today. Let's see if Gavin is there. Gavin, are you with us? Yeah, so no, no, sorry, I can't, uh, can't do it right now because I've got to do this bloody smug mug thing. I, I've never even heard of him, but it's, it's with that Alistair, Alistair Jolly, absolute wanker. I, can't, I cannot stand that guy. Yeah, he's awful. Yeah, all right, same time <coughs> next week. Yeah, okay, Gavin. we'll leave the gimp suit because I've paid for that. I own that. All Gavin. right, see you next week. Then. Gavin. Shit, are we, are we live? Dude. <laughs> hey, Alistair. It's so good to see you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on to this uh, this show, and uh, we're presenting live to what seventeen people. This is going to be exciting. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I knew, I just knew it was going to be like this before we even started. Are you are you paying attention now? Uh, uh, well, as always, you can expect the highest levels of professionalism from me, Alistair. Cool. You know this. Yeah. Well, let's get started with show. We'll 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 edit that bit out and post nobody will know that you weren't paying attention at the beginning so that would be the first time you've edited one of these videos wouldn't it <laughs> oh this is going to be brutal eh? yeah what it's going to be like yeah. well funny thing is you know today is all about composition right we wanted to get the best photographer we knew to like you know really give us a great discussion about landscape photography and composition and just really get the best on here but unfortunately Michael Shane Bloom was busy so Gavin has agreed to to step in and, and have a little conversation with us yeah well I've got him here like on, on the side so he's going to give me like little cheater tips to make me sound like I know what I'm talking about so if anything sounds like really uh, enlightened and like, extremely useful that it's probably Michael that's feeding me the info Shane Bloom in, in the corner yeah, yeah Shane Bloom Shane Bloom was, uh, he was a guest, uh, yeah, a few weeks ago, and he was amazing. He absolutely well, actually, phenomenal. I mean, if you are definitely suffering from some kind of insomnia and you need something to put you to sleep, I highly recommend that that is one of the best videos you could ever watch because three minutes of that and you are out like a light. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he was just really amazing. So, you know, you've got to keep the standard up. No pressure, oh, yeah. but... You, know, yeah. you need to keep the standard up. Yeah. Anyway, shall we? Shall we? Uh, let's start. Let's take a breath, and we'll let people uh, get uh, get prepared for what's ahead of us. You know, we've got a lot more than seventeen people joining. I'm glad to say. Thank you to everybody who is in the live stream at the moment. Uh, yeah, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're calling in from. We've got people from all over at the moment already. Gavin, we've got. Uh, let's see. Uh, Port Talbot in Wales. Oh. That was my Welsh accent, in case you didn't know. Um, no. San Diego, Alberta, Long ah. Island, Dublin, Portugal, France, Scotland. Hey. Shout out to the Scots. Canterbury in England, Milwaukee. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. A real international flavour to it. So, probably most of those people can't understand a word that we're saying. So there's always that. Well, I mean, probably not your accent, Alistair, but uh, I think my diction is is extremely well pronounced. You know, You're pretty what? sure people can understand what I'm saying. Oh, diction. Oh, sorry, I wondered what you were saying. Oh, you see, you've already taken it to a, a really crass level. And you know me, Alistair, I don't do crass. You don't I do am crass. all class. 
<coughs> okay. So, what are we going to talk about? In all seriousness, what are we going to talk about for the next... Oh, was I supposed to prepare something for this? Well, I, like... I had hoped we would talk for maybe an hour, and I had hoped you'd prepare something. You didn't prepare anything? Not really. I mean, like, you know, I, I figured there'd only be like 18 or 19 people watching, so uh, I just... i tell you what I did do. I did prepare something. I did cobble together... Um, a little album on, on Flickr of some, some images that I've taken over the years, which are sort of good examples, useful examples of uh, certain things that I do with my compositions. And, and composition is the most fun thing for me to talk about. You know, everyone can learn how to process their images brilliantly. Everyone can buy the best gear, but none of that is any use if you don't have the basics of composition. Composition is, to me, it's the most fun aspect of landscape photography because that's where you get to be creative out in nature. So it's it's always been my favorite favorite topic when it comes to the things that I teach in my workshops. You know, you can teach techniques, but the art form of of composition is is what it's all about. So I have I have put together this this little album. And I want to just kind of go through some of those in order. But but I also have sent you uh, five little video clips, which I'm hoping that you're going to share with your audience, which I believe that they will find extremely educational, inspirational and entertaining. So Could, I, yeah, I think I've maybe queued, I've queued those up. I've got um, <clears throat> I've got those the pre-roll queued up. And, and these are these are educational, right? These are all. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, there's so there's so much value that people are going to get out. They're not in any way a promotion of uh, a recent project that I've been working on. Not in any way. These are just purely uh, educational and uh, will give your viewers, all 22 of them, uh, a lot of value, I believe. Yeah, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll roll the first one, but we will, we will get to some of your promotional stuff. My gosh, have you been talking about some of it for weeks now but yeah we will get to we will get to some of that promotional stuff at the end but listen so this first video is ready to go and this is the start this is a composition educational thing right uh, yeah i mean in a roundabout way yeah okay right i'll i'll roll this first video now thanks in this episode chasing monsters of the deep and we'll get the whole place to ourselves right oh yeah i guarantee Your bloody trousers on. Oh, this is so good. Hi. Okay. Go back outside and fix it properly. Okay. Gavin. That yeah. was so, a trailer for the, the A4 project, right? Ah, oh, sorry, mate. I must have I must have mixed up the files uh, when I uploaded them. Um, but I mean, if anyone enjoyed that, if you want to learn more about that, you just go to f4roadtrip.com. And uh, yeah, you can see what that online photography course is all about, seeing as I'm, I'm actually not allowed to promote this on, on my channel because there's just too many trolls just hating me for trying to make a living. So I thought, you know, <clears throat> I'd try and be a bit creative about the, the avenues of with which I would promote. But that was supposed to be... You thought you'd bring the trolls over to my channel, is that what... Seen. Well, I, I didn't think you had any viewers, so I, I mean, <laughs> you, you need a certain amount of viewers before you can get trolls, you know that. Touché, so. touché. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I will give you that first one, but no oh, more, right? I'll let no, you do... No, honestly. Right, no yeah. more. We'll, we will do some proper educational stuff in the, in the next few videos. The We'll do a little bit promotion for you at the end. So oh, thank let's you. talk... My goodness, there's loads of folk i mean these 17 folk are from all over the world today it's amazing they must be they must be flying back and forward to different parts of the world like you know, it's like i don't know how they're getting from oregon to to scotland so quickly but yeah thank you so much um we're all get, already getting thumbs up that's that's really good so thank you everybody for for doing that um so before we get to the composition it's i don't want this to be the typical conversation with gavin hey how did you get started yada 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 but Give us, give us the elevator pitch. How you know? How did this, you know, English guy end up in Vancouver and end up being a semi decent photographer? <laughs> that that is high praise indeed from you, Alistair. Um, well, so I, I'm 
uh, born and bred in a town called Huddersfield in West Yorkshire in England. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's quite a pretty place. It's just like the rest of the UK. It's just a little bit overpopulated. So it was a, it was a very hilly area of the UK. I, I love hills and valleys. And so landscapes were always around me. And it's it does have a certain natural beauty. And it's got those cobblestone streets and alleyways in a there's a nice little village called home firth that's got mm-hmm. it's very picturesque and quaint so there's lots of that and there's lots of wonderful history so um the uk has always been a bit of eye candy and, I, and i've always loved that but I, I just could i couldn't wait to leave I, I always wanted to get out of the uk because <clears throat> i think as a young person you, you're always you always think that your destiny is, is somewhere else it's far flung you have to travel to, to get to your destiny so i always wanted to leave the uk in fact it's weird because it's it's now that i sort of miss it you know now i wish that i'd, I'd appreciated it a bit more when i lived there because of that history and those diverse landscapes you know so when i go back there to visit i especially scotland where my parents live i uh, i really just i love being there for a short period of time and then i want to come back back to canada um so i always wanted to get out of england and, you know, when, when you're an, an English speaking only person, you, you don't have any other languages, you're kind of limited to certain countries, what, the, what they call the colonies, I guess. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Canada was, was kind of an option. I, I was actually going to move to New Zealand. Um, I was so desperate to get out of the UK at that time. Not because not I was in trouble with the police or anything like that. Again. Um, <laughs> it was just... Um, I just wanted to, I just really wanted to get out and I, I was going to move to New Zealand. But before I moved there, I do have family in Canada. So I thought I'll go to Canada and I'll see my family because if I move to New Zealand, I'm not going to Canada. You know, it's yeah. so I, I went to see my family and I did have a cousin at the time who lived here on Vancouver Island, my cousin Dave. So I came to see Dave and that was it. I, I just fell in love with the island because it's just. It's just so beautiful. It's so diverse. You've got so much uh, beauty. You've got coastal beauty. You've got forests. You've got high mountains, waterfalls, lakes, beaches. It's it's just glorious. So I, I visited in 2006, and that was it. I, I was done and went back to England, sold everything, um, began the process of, of emigrating to Canada. And, you know, just a few few months later... I was living in Canada and it was it was a Herculean task. It cost me every amount of money that I'd ever made and saved. Um, and it was it was challenging, but it's I've never looked back. You know, I've never regretted it. And this place that I live right now is is I don't want to I don't want to keep saying it's the best place on earth because people keep coming here. And if I keep recommending it, it's just going to be completely, yeah. you know, I, t- I tell everyone in Scotland's horrible. Keep. <laughs> Yeah, Don't I should visit. start doing that. Yeah, <clears throat> I so we start doing that. We have learned one thing that you, obviously you didn't pay attention in language classes at school quite clearly. If <laughs> yeah, English speaking was the only option you had. Though. I didn't pay attention in any classes in school. Let's be honest. It doesn't surprise um, me. I just I was always that artistic kid. You know, I, the only A's that I ever got in my grades were were art, really, and. And I, I'm actually now, you know, I'm a musician now. That's That's been the, the bulk of my career was as a musician. But back in school, even then, I wasn't really interested in in music because, you know, you're playing the oboe or the violin or something. And I just wanted to play electric guitar and be a rocker. You know, you, you couldn't do that back, back when I was in school. I think now you can. But when I was in school in the 80s, you, you couldn't do anything cool in a, in a music class. So I hated that. So I was a bit of a dropout, really. I mean... It, <clears throat> I did okay, but yeah, I wasn't interested in school. It, it was just a means to an end. It was just something you had to get through so that you could start doing fun stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going back to school now and uh, getting some of the music opportunities there are now. My son plays cello at school, but he also uh, produces EDM music. Yeah, uh, I know you're quite old, Gavin. That's the electronic dance music. But oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. that's what that stands for. I had to learn that too. Um, and yeah, he's got a little YouTube channel that he posts that to. And it's amazing what you can do now as a creative and how how easily you can, you know, publish and, and spread whatever type of, of creative outlet you have now. It's, That's you know. why I, I feel like 
there's no excuse now for, you know, when kids say like, oh, I'm bored, so they cause trouble or whatever, which is an excuse that we used when we were kids. Oh, there's no to do. There's no to do. So I'll, I'll just smash windows or, or get into trouble with the law or whatever. <clears throat> there's always something to do now. Like there's, there's so many creative tools that if you want to make something and make something cool, not only do you have everything that you need in, in one little laptop, which you could buy cheapest chips these days, yeah. but you can then publish it. So you can bypass all of the the barriers to entry yep. that, that that I had back in the 80s and just go straight to your audience. You know, create something cool, put it out there and build an audience. There is no excuse for uh, saying there's nothing to do. I'm bored. There's lots to do. That's yeah, the, bollocks. The outlets now for any creative <clears throat> are phenomenal. You don't need publishers. You don't need agents, albeit yeah. there's huge benefits to both those things. Uh, but... Yeah, if you want to create a book, if you want to create uh, music and, and have an audience and have a followers, even um, have gigs or exhibitions, you can do it. Absolutely yeah. do it. Um, so, yeah, wonderful, wonderful time uh, for creatives, albeit not right now while we're all stuck at home. Uh, yeah, if, if, but, if we'd have had this conversation six months ago, five months ago even, I would have been the guy saying... <clears throat> This is the golden age. We are living in the best time possible. Like, <clears throat> it's just, it's brilliant, except for what's going on right now. But we, let's, we're not going to talk about that. No, we won't, we won't go into that. But, um, well, you know, let's, let's talk, talk on it briefly. What, um, what has, has been the impact? You're, you're someone who makes uh, a part of their living from traveling and doing workshops. So it's obviously had an impact on you, right? It's had a huge impact. I've seen an entire year's income evaporate instantly. And I mean, that's bad in itself. But what hurts emotionally about that is it took me the last sort of year and a half to build my business up to the point where I could finally sell out all my workshops. And that's an accomplishment. You know, I've, I've been doing workshops since 2013. And it's only just recently in the last sort of two years that and this is mainly because of the YouTube channel that I've not not only am I selling out, but I've got waiting lists, and that's a it's such a nice feeling to have waiting lists. And um, all of that work, you know, which was pretty much the YouTube channel, you know, every video that you see, its purpose is to to promote that brand. It's to remind people that you exist. And and by the way, if you want to come and shoot with me, here's a workshop. You know, that's that was the original purpose of of creating the channel. And um, it, to, to get to that point was just like, you've got no idea how, how many hours each day that I work just to keep that channel ticking over. And it worked, you know, it was, it was successfully, it managed to, you know, achieve the goal that I wanted it to achieve. And then all of that work was for nothing <laughs> because uh, the world is canceled, you know, uh, travel is canceled. So that, I think that hurt more than the financial loss it's 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 watching all of your work just go down the sink you know it's 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 the energy it's the it's the heart that you put into something to try and make it a success so when you see that go down the sink it's oh man it's it's painful yeah well the good the, the good thing though is there's still super strong community you've got a great audience as as do we here at smug mug and flicker and you know they're tuning in they're watching this part of why we do Smug Mug Live is to keep people connected and keep people um, motivated and inspired. And hopefully, uh, if we ever get around to talking about composition today, we will we will inspire people and, and motivate them so that when we do get out of this situation, we're ready to, to go and, you know, find the love for this passion that we have. So let's move on from pandemic. I, I do manage to talk about it in every show, unfortunately, but it's, you know, is the place we are at the moment. So let's yeah. let's move on. Let's talk about composition. Uh, and you said you had put together uh, some images on um, on your Flickr. Uh, you created a Flickr album, I believe, to to go through today. Um, one of the reasons we have Gavin on is obviously he's a, a great Flickr pro, has a wonderful audience there, and has been using uh, that platform for many many years. So. You know, we thought we'd use our own platform to have a, a look at some of these images. So, do you want to 
I'm assuming you've done that, right? Well, I mean, yeah, of course I have. You know, of course I've done that. But I was thinking, like, before we go into that, maybe if you just ran another one of those videos, because I think there's one that really gives a good introduction to what I'm about to show you. So maybe maybe if you just want to run one of those the videos. second one? Yeah, yeah. The second, second one you said was a good composition one. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, we'll do that, and then we'll come to your, yeah. your screen, and we'll have a look at it. So okay. Here. In this episode, tempers will flare. <laughs> Dude. She lost me. She doesn't like you. Your footsteps! I'm gonna be careful around Adam. He can explode, put it that way. Oh, that's fantastic! Thanks, man. Anybody know how to work this? What was okay. it? so? Oh, right, yeah. That was uh, oh, so, another trailer for F four. Yeah. So maybe that wasn't the, the one I was talking about. But I tell you what, I, I mean, I will definitely get onto some composition stuff. So I, I, I am ready to to share my screen now. If you, uh, I've, I've made sure that all the obscene stuff is not too visible. Man, can't believe. Are you sure you want me to do this? Are you sure you want me to hit share screen? Because I just can't believe Michael like, wasn't available, and I have to put up with this. But okay. Right, let's yeah, ready? share your screen. Yeah, go for it. Is right. it? So click share screen. Can you can you see that? Well, I'm going to make sure I look at it first before I make it live to the viewers. Oh, okay. I can only imagine what might be on this screen. So okay. No, I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay, I'll hit I'll hit it again. So oh, share screen. There we go. There you Technology's go. Technology that... hard. To know. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Thank okay. You. Right. So I've I've cobbled together on Flickr, and by the way. Alice does not pay me anything to uh, mention Flickr. Flickr is my favourite uh, photo sharing platform, mainly because I've been on there forever, and I just I just like how my images look. But you know, <laughs> definitely not paying you after all these trailers for Blimmin' F4. That's for sure. Well, I wouldn't say no to a free pro membership. Could that be arranged? Maybe do your T-shirt. No, I'll just keep paying. Yeah, okay. um, right. So let's start with this image. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a recent shot that I that it took uh, last January, just before Armageddon hit. And um, what what I want to talk about with this particular shot is this is a technique that I use in composition a lot, and it's something that I've talked about in recent videos on my YouTube channel, which is Photo Tripper with an F, by the way, if you want to go and check that out. And that is the use of lens distortion and magnification. So if you look at these uh, these columns, these pillars of tufa mounds, they look kind of huge in the frame, but they're actually really small. So the one in the center was probably about three feet tall. And the ones on either side were probably less than two feet tall. They were tiny, tiny little things. But by getting right low on the ground, so I just, I've got one of those tripods that has no center column. So you can literally put it flat on the ground and then just move it around. I just pop, put it flat on the ground and got really, really close. So that that first, um, I don't know, it's got almost like a flower shape there. That shape there was about 16 inches from the lens. So I had to focus stack this image to get the focus from the front to the back. But it's, it's lens distortion that makes that sort of impressive, sort of huge aspect to these shapes and I, it would have been better if I'd have had a 12 millimeter even a 14 millimeter lens but this was with a 16 to 35 it's it's the widest lens I had at the time but this is the thing with, with composition with wide angle lens is, is it's that you can if you've used them a lot and you've experimented with them a lot like, like I have you can walk past a scene like this which when if you walked past this it would be very unimpressive but with a bit of experience and, and you know, having a, a bit of a history of experimentation, you can look at something and think, ooh, if I get right down low, right up close, I could turn that into something completely different. I could make that look like these towering columns that just are huge. And so that's my, my first tip about uh, composition with wide angle lenses is to experiment with that, that trick. It's almost a little trick that you can use because it's it's almost like almost a forced perspective uh, trick. You can really, really exaggerate the shapes and make things look far more impressive 
than they really are. So how how high are those? in real life yeah i think i think that tallest one in the middle was almost maybe maybe almost three feet tall and the, the ones on either side are very very small uh and so there's a video about i've, I've, I've shot a vlog uh, about me shoot, shooting that shot creating that image and there's a bit of footage you can actually see me kneeling down on the ground with the camera and you'll actually see how just how small that um that arrangement of tufa mounds is it's like i say it's the kind of thing you just walk past it and go there yeah, that's not that impressive. I'll look for something bigger. But it was it was the way that the shapes interacted. I loved how those two little spikes kind of bookended that almost like table shaped uh, tufa mound. And so, like I say, be because I've done it a lot, you can look at something and think, oh, I bet that would work if I use this trick. You just get down low, get really close. The only downside is when you do stuff like that, you do have to focus stack. Otherwise, the foreground will just be completely blurred out which sometimes can look good sometimes it's a nice effect and then there's other times with a shot like this where it just it's begging for a focus stack so that's what i went for in that in that instance so yeah that's that's, a that's amazing tip. So, somewhere i've never been uh, it's so so alien it's yeah that, that's what i seek out i seek out alien landscapes that are just like you, you could be on a different planet because that just ignites my my sense of awe and it just blows me away. Which is strange though, because you you lived in the states. You were not were you in California? Uh, no, I was uh, New York and Texas. Oh yeah, you were a long way from that. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll 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 let you go on that one then. So do you want do you want to say another one? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay, people so let's go on people to the are really enjoying it. So th this image um, I shot a few years ago in the Faroe Islands. This is an example of a lazy composition. This is one of those shots where you literally just rock up and go, oh, that's nice. And it's just absolutely lazy. And it's okay to do that sometimes. The times when that works is when you show up somewhere that's A, spectacular, and B, has spectacular conditions like I got this, this night. That's a gimme. That, that kind of shot. It's almost effortless. You really don't have to try hard. So the elements in this shot that to me make it a beautiful shot are, of course, you've got these lovely cliffs, these beautiful cliffs, which have these strange shapes that are very dramatic. You've got this waterfall that's getting blown around by the wind. And then, of course, you've got this spectacular light that's creating basically pyrotechnics in the sky. And I, I love how the, that light is reflected on the surface of the water here. So it's got all of those elements. And it is okay to go to somewhere like that and just do the obvious shot, the lazy, lazy shot, if you are getting those conditions. But um, I've seen other shots of this where the conditions weren't as good. And that's where you'd have to work a little bit harder to refine your composition. So, that it, so for example, this ridge here, this takes up quite a bit of frame space, but I felt it was okay to leave it in because it balances out the amount of space over here. So it's well balanced. But if, if I hadn't have had all this epic light, I would have used a much tighter focal length and I would have perhaps zoomed in to exclude this ridge and featured more of the waterfall in the frame. So one of my favorite photographers is a guy called Sean Bagshaw, and he's got a brilliant shot of this where the, the wind is so powerful that it's blowing that waterfall back up in the air yeah i've seen, uh, I've seen like that a, a few times where you get the conditions yeah. it literally goes upwards it's incredible and, and when you get those conditions but you're not necessarily getting this nice light you would probably compose it a little bit different so that instead of the the waterfall being quite small in the frame here because it's just one element right if you'd have got those dramatic wind conditions but not the dramatic light then you would fill the frame, zoom in a bit more with the interesting shape of the waterfall and you would get rid of what is essentially a boring element. This ridge that you see on the right is a boring element. But I think with the balance of other elements, it works in this image. So that's that's an example of a lazy gimme shot. <laughs> and I, I want people to know that that is OK if you are getting spectacular light. Yeah. Well, that lazy shot of yours was actually number one on Flickr Explore earlier this week, which is it to was, be commended. That's, that's why I got 110,000 views on it. Yeah. Um, that, that is one of the things I like about Flickr is every now and then, not 
not as often as I would like, to be quite honest. But every now and then I, I get an image in in Explore, and then you know that gets a lot of eyeballs on my on my um, photo stream, and and then you know I get a few more subscribers from that. I've tried to bribe Alistair into getting me into the sweet spot of the algorithm, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Well, um, the best way to get in that sweet spot is to have good pictures. So, you know. so I, every picture I post should be in there. Then. That's well, what you're saying. Better than the other five hundred that are there before you. Well, I think that's a I think that's a given, to be fair. But yeah. anyway, so I mean, I can get on with the next image. There's, a, there's, a, there's another one to show you, but um, this might be a good time to to roll another one of those videos that, that I sent for you, which is definitely I'm one hundred percent sure that this one is in a roundabout way something to do with composition. Okay, I'm I'm hesitant to press the button. You know that. Well, let me know when you press it, because I'm just going to go and fill up my... Uh, it's not vodka, my water, M while you do that. Maybe you All should right? go get some vodka. Right, okay, I'm going to play this compositional, right. educational one. Okay. All right, go. I'll be back in place. In this episode, winter bites back. Guys, wake it. up! There's a road is blocked by a river. I think we can make it. <laughs> Look at it! Was that uh... your timing was impeccable? I'm glad you left there. Otherwise, I would have screamed at you. Do, does Thomas and Adam and Nick have to deal with this all the time? What are you talking about? Well, you're just not doing what you said you would do. That's another trailer for F4. We said. Oh, sorry, man. It, it's a it's an honest mistake. It's like, you know I did. Uh, anyway, let's go on with the next image. So this next image is a shot of Mono Lake, the same place that you just saw in the shot a couple of shots ago, but it's from a completely different angle. This is an angle that I have never seen uh, shots of Mono Lake before, and this was on. This was shot during that F4 road trip that, that was to do with the trailers that you, sorry, the educational videos that you just saw recently. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when you're out shooting with three other mediocre photographers, um, the one thing you don't want to do is be taking the same mediocre shots that they're taking. So I wanted to do something different. And what I thought I would do is I would get away from my subject elevate my position get higher and then shoot with a long lens because i knew that would be the opposite of what they were doing <clears throat> so i hiked up this this ridge line got to the very top of it and so this is an example of elevation in your landscape photography it's an example of getting higher up and looking down towards your subject to view it in a slightly unusual way and i'm not saying i'm the first but i i have not seen uh, pictures of of the Tufa Mounts from Mono Lake shot in this way, so for me it's it's definitely definitely different. So elevation is, is the whole purpose of me showing you this shot. Is it doesn't work for all subjects, but if you can find something that's a bit unusual, and you get further away and higher up, and guarantee you'll be getting a completely different look to all of the other photographers that you see littered around the beach doing the same old same old. And so what I had to do with this shot, <clears throat> excuse me, is it was it was kind of windy that morning. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of strapping on a, a, a 10-stop filter. Um, but in this instance, it was it was asking for it because there were shots where parts of the water were, were smooth and they weren't catching any wind. And those were really beautiful. But the ripples in the windy sections were just kind of ugly. It was an ugly detail that I didn't want. And I guess this is also another example of simplification as well in your in your in your compositions. It's it's simplifying things. And so by putting on a 10 stop ND filter and forcing a 30 second exposure in bright, bright sunlight, it, it simplified the water so that it wasn't full of detail, it wasn't full of texture. It was nice and smooth, nice and silky, and it your eyes are then drawn towards the tufa mounds, which are catching that beautiful morning light in such a pleasing way. So the purpose of this is to explain to you the elevation and distance, I guess, 
will will get you a completely different look. And all, and also, it's an example of doing something a bit different, thinking outside the box, and and doing the opposite of what your friends are doing, because you know that was the best shot from that day that I got out of all of us. I actually uh, have to admit, I I watched this episode recently of that certain series <coughs> and uh, I really thought you'd messed up by heading up the hill while everybody else was down at the shoreline but it's an incredible shot you really nailed it I thought I'd messed up because <laughs> actually to be honest the other part of the reason why I went up there is because it was looking like the sky was just going to be like a blue sky day and I was like oh, they're not going to get any colourful clouds yeah. Which, if, if I'd have known that I was going to get all these gorgeous pink clouds, maybe I would have stayed down on the beach and shot some wide-angle stuff to feature the sky. But I was I felt sure that it was not going to. So I headed up to this hill, and, and then as soon as I got there, the sky lit up. I was like, bollocks. <laughs> oh, you so, nailed it, though. It's an incredible shot. <clears throat> um, there's been a lovely bit of banter going on in the, in the chat window. Um, a few folk... Um, talking about Flickr, which is excellent, and, and doing my job for me and promoting Flickr, which is phenomenal. Uh, we did have a, a viewer, Barbara, who's unfortunately had to, to leave because her lunch hour has finished. But she said, oh, I don't want to leave just now because that is my favourite of Gavin's shot. So there you go. Oh, it's one of her I'm, I'm guessing that's Barbara Livieri. I bet it that's is it. Barbara Livieri, yeah. yeah. She's she's going to watch the rewatch, though. So uh, She's a super fan. She's, she's a really good supporter. I really appreciate Barbara. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, Anyway, that's that's a, an example of elevation, distance, and thinking outside the box. Okay, before so you, before you move on, there's, there's a fantastic comment here. I just thought I'd mention. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! Michael Shamebloom's in the chat. How amazing! Oh, uh, it's just made the show right. So Michael says, uh, "Oh, he joined just as I was playing that trail, and he says, oh, great timing! I love watching Nick, Adam, and Thomas, the three amigos.' There you go. That's pretty cool. That's uh, that's just you know what that is." That's just bitterness right there. That's just bitterness because, oh, oh, 100%, because Shane Bloom, <coughs> he's just upset that it's not F5.6, you know, because he's he's the best photographer out of all five of us, right? <coughs> and and to, in his mind, it should have been F5.6, and, and he should have been the fifth member. And, you know, I did actually lobby uh, for that with the guys, but... Uh, Adam Gibbs was like, no way, we're not having that guy. He's too talented. We're not having him. And, I, you know, I, I tried. I tried, I, I tried, Michael, but... Uh, but so there's there's definitely there's definitely some ill feeling there, which I'm hoping that we can, with a bit of counselling, we can get through. Uh, but who knows, you know. So that's what that is, a bit of bitterness. So F5.6, so that was um, Michael, Adam, Thomas, Nick, the videographer... So does that make you the point six? Well, I'm I'm the F five, and the other guys collectively are the point six. I mean, you've seen the videos. Clearly, that's quite evident. Surely. <laughs> Michael says. Right, on, Michael says who the hell shoots F four anyway? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not even sharp. Yeah, um, so do you, want, do, you want, do you want to see another image? Or yeah, we've got we've got lots of questions coming in. I promise those of you who are writing in the questions, I'm not ignoring them. We will. We will get to them. Um, well, we could do some questions if you want. Shall, like shall we do some questions just now? Yeah, and then we'll, do some we'll, questions. Um, if, if, Gav, if Michael can ever stop throwing insults at you here in the chat. We should bring Michael in. Can we get Michael in? Let's get him in on Skype and get him in here and give him some grief. What, drop you off and just get Michael in? Well, can't you get both of us? If I have to, yeah. If you, you want to stay? Well, you thought you you told me you were like really advanced with the, all this gear stuff i'm sure you can figure out that out i, oh, can, I do can do it it's just whether i want you know to <coughs> to keep you on if i have michael that's like uh, <laughs> actually i you know i'm having second thoughts about that invitation now you know like this is my show right this, it's all about me so let's you know maybe, maybe we should bring him in at some point Let, yeah let's get be to prepared to just kick him out whenever i give you the, the wink why don't you stop sharing your screen for a second and we'll get to some yeah. of these questions and then but keep okay. the questions come we'll do more at the end um did that work did it stop sharing? it did it just when when you're sharing screen the the system puts a bit more detail into the the share screen so the images look amazing and uh takes a little bit away from your dashing good looks so we may as well stop oh. sharing that one uh right let's see if i can find one there was a comment about slowing down 
Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, from David Ellensworth, who says, serious question, uh, do you believe that slowing down and not snapping away like a tourist and actually taking time to absorb your surroundings is the biggest leap to better compositional awareness? Well, it's definitely essential. I don't know if it's the biggest leap, but I'll be honest, there are times when you just know you've got an epic shot, an epic composition, and you don't need to move. Sometimes there is only one possible shot. So in those instances, I, I really do take my time, you know, and I sit there and I study it and I, and I refine, you know, over an hour, I might just like zoom in a tiny little bit more. I might just nudge the angle a little bit. I might just get a little bit lower. That's very enjoyable. And that, that will uh, definitely improve your, your compositions. But at the same time, you know, I've been in situations a lot where I've just been frantically running around like, so you'll think you've got something good, then you look over there, it's like, oh shit, that's way better. So you run, you get something else. So it's okay. Like, yes, it's great. If you've got that luxury of time, if you're there early, you've scoped out your comps and everything is dependent on the light. So if you are, if you've set up a wonderful composition and you're waiting for that cloud to move in and light up, great. But the chances are you have to have a plan B because that cloud, it might not go where you think it's gonna go. It might go in the opposite direction or the, the clouds in the background that really were completely pathetic 20 minutes ago have now just exploded with color. So you, you have to be prepared to adjust yourself for what the light is doing. And that's why if you do get there early, you can the ideal scenario is to set up a composition in all four directions. So if you can find a cool subject, a really cool foreground element, and then position it so that if the light goes off in that direction, you've got a shot, and then try and do one for all four corners of where you are, you set up for success if the light happens. So yeah, the answer is yes, but be prepared to frantically run around like a headless chicken, which I often find myself doing. <laughs> um Let's see what we've got here question-wise. Well, not very often that someone specifically asks for a shout-out, so let's give them a shout-out, seeing as you, you asked so nicely. Uh, Mally <coughs> Davis says, uh, you've done yourself proud, Gavin, with the F4. I'm an F4, jeez. Best of luck with it. There you go. So. Thank you, Mally. Mally's a super fan. Yeah. You can always count on Mally for a bit of moral support. Yeah, and he's doing great. He's, uh, he's uh, talking about uh, Flickr in here and can... You know, promoting it and encouraging people to to get their Flickr account. So thank you for that, Mally. So give you a shout out there. Uh, let's see, Gavin is the greatest. I'll we'll ignore that one. Uh, um, Can we go back to that one? That sounded good. Let's see. Man, these are all just too nice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're real, you know. Yeah, I'm just there's just lots of really really nice comments. So. Um, keep the questions coming and uh, oh here's, here's another one actually from David uh, who asked earlier about slowing down um, he says uh, do you recommend always bracketing shots just in case irrespective of your hard drive space yeah I mean it can't hurt right but there are there are situations where the light is so flat and you know you don't really need to bother depending on how, how you know good your camera is at, at recovering shadows um but most of the time i do most of the time i bracket just because i like to have that that leeway with my dynamic range but you know it it doesn't hurt to take that extra shot or those extra two shots so you, you might as well do it yeah let's see uh, another question here uh, and this is great this if, if you're posting uh, a question in the chat if you start with with the word question it makes it so much easier so manuel well, gets, uh, gets a shout out for why is there, are there lots of trolls like just posting like really really nasty comments no they're all just really complimentary to you so i don't really want oh, to really? stoke your ego too much with that but um how many have we got here we've got like 18 people still over this dropped out of it well i think with all the trailers it dropped down to about five people but Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. Yeah, right. uh, so, yeah, Manuel's question was, Gavin, where in the world would you like to photograph that you haven't been before? 
Oh, I get asked this question on every single podcast, and I'm going to give the same answer. And it is the Algerian desert, uh, because I've seen pictures of it. I've never been. And it, it just looks magical. It just looks like something out of a, you know, an Indiana Jones movie. It just looks spectacular. So that's that's on the top of my list. But it's, I guess that's not happening anytime soon. Hmm. Well, maybe soon. Oh, here's a nice nice one that looks like a bit of an insult. So that's good. Let's get this one up. This is, uh, Pedro says, Gavin is the worst photo tripper guy ever. I don't follow him on YouTube and I don't have the bell notifying me. And I've never saw a video from any photo tripper channel. Kidding. So it was a little... That sounds like a super fan to me. <laughs> that sounds like one of my, one of my tribe. Uh, he, says, uh, he says he was one of the guys that made me spend money on a camera. So... Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's a slippy slope. Yeah, to gas. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Roger asks, and great, you started with a question, which helps me a lot. Would you rather shoot alone or with a group of others? Uh, honestly, alone. Um, I love solitude. I, I work better when it comes to photography. Uh, I work better alone because there's no distractions. You get in the zone, right? And it's just you and nature and this this camera in between. And it's this camera, this little time machine that you're using to capture this exquisite moment in time. And I love that. It sounds very hippie and spiritual, but I love that connection to nature. Uh, and it's just, it, it's a beautiful thing. And some of my most happiest most wonderful moments have been when i'm in the zone and i've got beautiful light and i, I just know oh i've just it's almost like when you get the shot up until that point i'm sometimes i've got the shakes it's like i'm on a high i've got this massive adrenaline rush and i've got the shot and then as soon as i've got the shot i can start to relax a little bit and then often in that period of relaxation after that sort of high then I take my best shot. It's like I've given myself permission to relax. I'm seeing things even clearer because I haven't got all of this adrenaline pulsing through my system. And those are when I capture my best shots. And those always happen when I'm alone. I mean, I have I have captured some some of my best shots when I'm with a group doing workshops, but that's just the look of the draw. That just, you know, that just happens to be where you were at the time, you just, your timing was good. But, um, and I do enjoy shooting with other people. I, I enjoy doing the vlogs with other people. But if, but if it comes to just straight photography, if I could have my choice, it would just be me alone in nature with beautiful light. This, this, the funny thing is that when you do get that, once you're out of that high, once you've, you've taken your shots and you're all done, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking around for someone else to share the moment with, you know, it's like, oh, did you see that? Oh no, I'm alone. Oh, so it's it's a we it's weird. It. It's almost yeah. like a a paradox. Like you you're enjoying that alone time and that solitude, but then once you've once you've come out of your creative uh, photogasm, you're then ready to share the moment with someone else, and they're not there. You know, so you have to tell you have to tell your love when you get home. Oh, you should have been there. Well, you shouldn't really. Cause, you know, then I, I wouldn't have been able to concentrate. But you should have been there. Yeah. It's funny the rest of the F4 guys said they prefer it when you shoot alone as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, it's funny Roger who asked that question about shooting alone. He came back and said, "Would you mind explaining that to my wife so that she understands? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he can be alone and not have to." Uh, take her along, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I have to. Why are you waving a pair of tweezers about? What What's happening? <laughs> Well, I was just thinking, like, if I get really bored, you know, I, I do have to do a bit of manscaping here. And it, my, my nostrils just get so hairy. You know, when you reach middle age, have you not found that hairs start to grow out of all kinds of, like, my ears? Like, I have to pluck my ears now. It's not good. Yeah. I didn't have to do that in my 30s. Gosh, I've got that to so look I'm forward to, middle age. Jeez. But let's be honest, Alistair, I think you've been plucking your nose hairs for at least five years. Well, can't pluck anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, shall we? Shall we look at another image? Uh, there are still questions yeah. coming in. I'll get to them and uh, okay. let's let's share your screen. We'll have a, a little chat about some of that. So, are you seeing that one? 
You seen that? That's the the, the yeah the Mono League one. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go on to the next one. Oh. So this is another shot that we we all were so we captured on that F four road trip. We were just so ecstatically happy to get these conditions. So when you when you embark on a trip, <clears throat> especially a trip that is, you know high pressure you've got targets to meet you've got a deadline you've got all these other people to consider you you know you, you if you get conditions like this while you're out doing a film in a project unbelievable the, the look that we had on this was unbelievable and so this morning we all shot like between two and four thousand frames because we were just on high speed continuous burst and it was just Photogasm after photogasm, we were just all ecstatic. You know, it was it was one of the best shoots I have ever done in my life, and I'm pretty sure the 200 other photographers that were there would say the same thing. But in terms of composition, and the reason why I put this in this little photo album is this is an example of anticipation. So this is capturing a moment. It's it's the moment where the wave is is coming in. And it's it's cresting, and it's re it's reaching its absolute maximum potential before it collapses. And so, to me, this is this is an image about anticipation. It, it's it's capturing. It's almost like a story. You know, people talk about telling a story in their photography. Well, that that's what this is. And 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 the story is is about you know these elements. It's just, it's the story of the power of the wave and how very short lived that power is. Like it's. It explodes and then it's instantly done. You know, it's it's a, a very fleeting moment, and I, I just love that that element to this shot. Without that wave, it it just wouldn't work. It's all about that wave, but I liked it because you can see the landmass in the distance. So it, it gives you an idea of scale. It gives you an idea an idea of where you are in time. You know, in, in what what your place is and and time. So it puts you in a scene. We all took images that had like a disembodied wave where there was no background. And Adam got a really good one of the of the exact same moment in time. <laughs> and this is the funny thing. We, we all shot thousands of frames. And Adam sent me, I said, oh, send me, your, send me yours. I want to see what you got. He sent me it. And it, it was this exact wave at this exact moment in time because he stood next to me. But his shot was just of the wave. It was a disembodied wave. And I really loved that. I think that that worked uh, because that would have been a, a perfect example of simplification. Yeah. But with this one, it's it, this is an example of anticipation. You know, you can even see uh, another wave rolling out. You know, this this curve here is rolling out to meet this one that's coming in. So that's the reason why I chose that. It's an example of anticipation and that moment in time that you just have to be ready to capture, which you might think is difficult, but it's not. When you're shooting at high speed continuous burst for thousands of frames, you know, I'm pretty sure a few other people got that same shot on that same day, but this is the one that I picked out of like 4,000. It's just, it's just that moment in time. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that shot. So yeah, an example, yeah, an example of anticipation, you know, and telling a story in your shot. So that's, that's that one. Yeah, and there's, as you say, before you move on, there's, you know, there was dozens of people at that same place, as you say, shooting the same sort of shot. But unless they get that same composition, that exact same moment, um, they're all going to look so different. The scale that the, the the rock face gives, and also the birds, the birds really help this shot. They're phenomenal. But the killer yeah. feature for me is that backlight, the backlight on the wave. It is just incredible. Well, that was it. I mean, we, we were there all morning. We got there just after sunrise and it, it was flat light. There was no backlight <clears throat> and we were shooting for hours. We, we captured thousands of frames and we were actually happy with those frames until the sun peeked through and we got that backlight. And it was instantly 3000 frames became trash <laughs> because you got that dynamic contrast and you got that glow that you could see coming through the wave itself and also this you know this gla this glare that you can see on the rocks there all of a sudden everything came to life and it's it's funny how you know one one cloud can make such a huge difference in you know these 3000 frames that you thought were great have now just become garbage you yeah. know it's incredible so incredible moment and that if, was a magic day before you move on if you want um 
if you want to see something that's amazing to behold, watch the, the F4 road trip. Check out the scene where Nick reviews the first images that the uh, the shot of the waves. It's uh, it's quite a moment to behold. I won't do any spoilers, so but it's pretty. Incredible. That is something to behold. Something which, uh... I will never be able to unsee, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll yeah. let people. Uh, in there. There's a question that's very relevant to, to that, that frame. Uh, Dreamer asks, uh, I do suppose that this is a pretty fast shutter speed, but generally, how do you capture birds in your photos? I always seem to just get blurs. So what kind of, how high a shutter speed were you at in that image? That was probably a thousandth of a second. So, you know, when you shoot in that fast, um, then it's no problem to get the birds completely frozen in motion. I mean, you can see like even individual droplets of water. <clears throat> you can see the spray. That's, you know, when you're shooting at a thousandth to, to a, to a 1500th of a second, it's easy. It's easy to get that. Uh, the chat, the challenge was, you know, you, you're always trying to keep your ISO really low because you don't want noise. And up until that moment where the sun popped out and we got a much brighter um, conditions, we were all shooting at fairly high ISOs. So we, we had to remember, ooh, right, the sun's out. We can, we can now go, you know, we still keep our shutter speed nice and fast, but we can bring the ISO down and make a much cleaner image. And I'll be honest, I think I pasted in a couple of these birds. I'm not going to lie, right? There, there was probably one, two, three, four, five. As pro there was probably five birds. I think I pasted that one in, maybe that one from another shot. You ruined, so, it, ruined it for me now. Move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't matter. Nobody's listening because Michael's answering that question in the chat, so she'll probably um, pay attention to Michael. Anyway. Yeah. If you've got any technical questions, uh, Michael will be able to answer all of those because he knows way more <laughs> than I do about any of that stuff. Uh, okay, next image. Bosch. This is a recent image uh, here on Vancouver Island. So this is an example of pre-visualization. So when I was standing there shooting this shot, all of these elements, just I just loved all of these elements, but there was absolutely no way that I could fit all of them into the frame because this is a huge scene. So this is a three-shot panorama. And so whenever you shoot in a panorama, you have to pre-visualize in your head what, what am I going to fit in this frame? And then you, you also have to calculate a little bit extra for that cropping space that you're going to need. And so this this is a perfect example of, if you if you look at, I hope, can you see my mouse as I'm waving yep, my yep, mouse? Yep, yep. So if you look at from, say, let's say, this area here to just about this area of the root, that is what I could fit into one frame. And that's even at 16 millimeter on a full frame camera. So that's pretty wide. And it looked pretty good, but I just knew that it would look way better if I could have all of this root system that's clutching. like It's like a hand clutching this boulder for dear life and has probably been there for decades, maybe 60 years. And it, it's, it's just <laughs> it's clinging onto this boulder for dear life. And I, I just I loved that feature, but I also loved the waterfall, the column. And then I loved this rock over here on the left which is cast um, topography. It's a, it's a particularly unique type of rock formation here on Vancouver Island. I wanted all of those elements. So I had to pre-visualize, okay, I'm going to make a panorama. How is it going to work? And if, if you watch the video that I posted on YouTube of me creating this shot, you'll see me do two sweeps. And actually, I'm recording on the camera the sweep that I do that kind of demonstrates, okay, this is what I'm going to do in my panorama. I'm going to, I'm going to start here. I'm going to move over there. That's where it's going to begin. That's where it's going to end. So you have to pre-visualize your composition, not knowing if it's really going to work. You know, you, I could have got home and stitched this together and it just might not have worked. But by going through this process multiple times, you kind of know what your sort of um, boundaries are with what's, what's going to work out. And that requires pre-visualization. It's thinking ahead of, what is this image going to turn out to be? I know I can't see it in my camera at this time. I know it's going to take a bit of work to put it all together, but you have to have a vision. You have to have an idea of what are the elements that I want to include 
and how am I going to put it all together? And always remember to add in that extra bit of crop space in addition to your pre-visualized idea so that you can crop it out and get that finished image. And, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, this is a, a phenomenal Im image. It, it reminds me of something from like Lord of the Rings or something, you know, with the trees. And uh, and it was one another one that was hugely popular on Flickr. This, uh, this one did really well for you on Flickr with a lot of good likes and comments. Yeah, that one got in Explore, as you can see there. Yeah. So I got in the sweet spot that week. And that there's a, if you want to go back to this video, if you want to look at my, my Flickr uh, profile, there is a link there to the, to the video that shows you, shows me actually composing this shot and how I, how I pre-visualized it on the scene. So that might be of interest to some people. But before I go on to the next video, Alistair, sorry, uh, still the next shot, Alistair, maybe you should roll another one of those videos that are definitely all about composition no, not just, a, not a promo i'm just not gonna <laughs> just i know what's gonna come this isn't about education or is it yeah, honestly i'm i'm pretty sure that this one is it's going to tick all the boxes okay yeah, i think you're safe i think you're safe to roll this one right okay let's roll this one here we go in this episode drama in the desert <laughs> It's going to kick off. So you disappoint me, Adam. Are you still laughing? <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys what this place looks like. This light is fantastic. Oh, oh God! Kick the old bastard. Oh. Well. It's just this that easy, folks. Well, that was a surprise. Yeah. yeah what, sorry did, about that. what did we learn about from that one? Uh, never believe Gavin when he tells you to roll a video. Yeah. Okay. I thought it's probably the last one I'll roll, to be honest, because, you know, what's the point? Nobody got anything out of that. So, okay. Right. Let's right. ignore that and move on to something else. So, am I still sharing my screen now? I don't know. Yeah, you are. Maybe. Yep. Maybe they never even saw that. Maybe they just saw me looking stupid with this image in the background. No, unfortunately, I had flipped to show the video and they saw it full screen. So. Oh, brilliant. That's good. Okay, so brilliant onto the you. next image. Yeah. I mean, I can, I'm sure my, my bank account is just lighting up now with people ordering the F4 road trip, I'm sure. Well, um, there's five people watching, so you never know. One of them might. Oh, right, yeah. There's a good chance, yeah. And that's probably my mother, one of those. You know, I mean, he, is, yeah. is Shane Bloom still with us? Uh, he's, he's, he, I think he's with, when you say with us, he's really busy and they're helping everybody that's in that chat, giving them some really great education and advice. Mm. So, yeah, he's, he's still there. Right. Well, I do like to have him around just to make me look professional. I basically ride off his coattails is what I do. Right. right so this image here, Frost Glow, this is another Vancouver Island classic uh Anyone who's come to Vancouver Island has probably shot this tree. And this is an example. The reason why I put this in is an example of simplicity, right? It's, it's an example of picking a very obvious subject and using a, a really long focal length with a, a wide aperture to simplify your composition, make it very, very obvious. What am I looking at? What is my subject? And luckily I got it during some pretty beautiful light that that morning now people will probably look at this and think oh Kevin why did you slap this straight in the middle why don't you just push it off to one side and the truth is I've got those images from years past I've, I've shot this so many times that I have lots and lots of images of this in different different compositions pushed off to the side with mist in the background and this was just one of those days I thought no I'm going to try and just see how it looks right in the center of the frame and I, I really like the shot and I really like the light. But like I said, the the reason why I've included it in this, this album is, number one, it's okay to pick a subject that's very, very obvious and wang it right in the middle of your frame. That That is okay. Don't, don't feel like you always have to push something off to the side. If it looks better, then do it. But it is okay. Don't let people tell you that. Oh, that's too obvious. You, you've put it right in the middle of the frame. Oh, no. If it looks good, it looks good. You know, if it works, it works. 
the simplification should be something that you you strive for in your composition. And, and I feel like if you can't answer this one simple question, what am I taking a picture of? Right. If the answer to that is not clear, if you have a confused response to that to that question, that's an indication that you might want to simplify. You might want to refine your composition, pick a subject that is more obvious, it is more simple to the eye, and that way your audience, when they look at it, they can easily identify, okay, I know what I'm looking at a picture of, and they can connect with it on a deeper level, and it's just going to have far more impact. And I think people struggle with this a lot, you know, especially if they've got a big, grand landscape. In a situation like this, it's easy. It's right, okay, that's a core cool feature. That's what I'm going to take a picture of. But when people are out in, let's say, the mountains, and they've got this huge, huge landscape with all kinds of stuff, that's when you really have to stop and think, okay, okay, what am I taking a picture of? If you ask yourself that question and really put a bit of effort into thinking about the answer, your compositions immediately will get better because you are making it very clear as to what this picture is about. And then once you've figured out what your shot is about, then you can look at other elements that you could bring in to the foreground. But obviously this is a telephoto shot there is no foreground. It's all about that fairy tree growing out of that that stump there. So yeah, this is an example of simplification. It's an incredible shot. Um, a lot of folk are agreeing that you know rules are there to be broken. So you know, the rule of third is is just a guide. It's not a definitive rule. And this is an incredible shot. I've never been to Vancouver, and dude, every time I see images like these, I know you're saying it's a very popular shot, but Man, I, I want to get that in my portfolio for sure. It's an incredible looking place. Nah, don't don't come to Vancouver Island. It's crap. No one, no one ever wants to come here. It's ugly. Uh, it's boring. Nah, just just don't don't bother. Yeah. Unless you're one of my clients coming to a workshop, and then, then same then goes come. for like Glencoe and those places. Yeah, there's no point. Too late, there. man. The secret's out. The secret's <laughs> out. It's been out for a long time. Yeah, but we send everyone to Glencoe because it's there's way better places. Yeah, that's I know I know what you mean, but we won't talk about those because I want to keep those quiet as well. Yeah. There was a question right. here. Um, one of your super fans, David Ellensworth, says, "How important is lens sharpness to landscape photography? I see some images that are tack sharp, and also others where Orton effect is added, which effectively begins to take away sharpness. What do you think about lens choice?" Well, I mean, I went through a phase where sharpness was. I was obsessed with sharpness. I do think it's important. I think when you see people on forums saying, oh, this lens is too sharp, it just makes me shake my head and think, what are you talking about? You know, that that's absolute crap. You you can you can reduce sharpness in post, but if your if your lens is just not a sharp lens, it doesn't matter how much sharpness you add in post, it's never gonna look sharp. Um, having said that though, I mean, if you don't have the budget for the really expensive, super sharp lenses, you've got no choice. You've got to you've got to work with what you've got. And I, I would, and it depends what your final medium is. If you are printing, and you print in five foot wide prints, yeah, you sh you should spend that extra amount of money and get the best, the sharpest lenses that you can get. But if all you're doing is posting on a four by five Instagram that most people are going to look at on their phone. It's going to look sharp anyway. You know, if you've focused well, you've done a good process of the image, you haven't over-sharpened it, it's going to look sharp by the time you've squ squished it down to a tiny little image on Instagram. It, it's going to look sharp. But if you're, you know, if you're looking at something on a, a desktop, big screen, if you're looking at Flickr on a desktop, a big screen, and you've got, you know, a, not a very sharp image, you, you will see that. So... But, you know, in a nutshell, to answer that, I would say, what is your final medium? What are your goals as a photographer? If you need that sharpness for the final medium, then absolutely spend the extra money. But if you're just starting out and you just want to get going on Instagram or whatever, can you really afford eight grand <clears throat> just to get that little bit of extra sharpness? It's you only you can justify that. But, you know, I, I'm a professional landscape photographer. I have to have the sharpest stuff I can get, you know, and to me, it's justifiable to a lot of people, hobbyists, it might not be, you know, you might not see the, the benefit of that investment. Go back to the shot of the, the claw, the tree with the, the claw, because that, 
even even though we are, I mean, I've seen the image, you know, on on Flickr, and it's you know one thing we're very proud of at Flickr is you know we start with amazing image quality, but even here in this broadcast, where effectively you're sending this over the internet to me, I'm then restreaming it out to everybody, and it still looks incredible. It's um, it's just incredibly sharp. It's, do you add much in the way of uh, sharpening in post production? Yeah, but only you know, only what's required. I think if you go overboard, um, it just looks bad. And, and you know, like the question earlier was was kind of like Orton effect was was mentioned. <clears throat> it's nice to have. I, I think I think Orton effect is completely overused. Mm. I haven't used any of it in this image, and I think people have just gone crazy with it. It, it just does my head in when I see these images that are just like, ah, oh, dude. 90% Orton effect. What are you doing? It's like a, it's a fad. It's a phase. It's it's a fashion that people started doing it years ago. I was doing it years ago. I called it Vaseline because it kind of looked like you had Vaseline yeah. all over the front of your lens. I think you have to be, it's, it's like any other tool that you use in Photoshop. You have to be sparing. You have to be tasteful with it. Only apply it in, in certain areas. And even then, bring the transparency down to like 19%. Anything more than like 23% is it's just ridiculous. It just, I hate it when I see these images that are beautiful compositions, beautifully processed, and then bosh, they slap an absolute ton of Orton effect. And it's like, oh, God. Try and, you know, same is lame. Don't do the same thing as everybody else. Everybody's doing it. Well, you should do something else. You know, so I think if you're going to use Orton effect, use it in certain areas to to soften parts of the image so that your eye is drawn to the sharper parts of the image. And it'll be, it'll be a bit more timeless. It'll still look good in five years. Whereas I guarantee if you look at an image you posted two years ago, when you were going through your first stages of auto effect usage, you're probably going to be looking at it thinking, Oh my God, what, what was I thinking? I've done it. I've been there. I've done it. You know, I've gone through that phase. So, you know, it, yeah, it does sound kind of stupid to get the sharpest lens as possible. And then blur it all with a bunch of auto effect, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no, that that definitely turned out very sharp. I definitely added some sharpening. But again, it's like you add sharpening based on what your medium is. So I, I added what I thought was the appropriate amount for a web image. Had I done a an eight foot wide print, I may have used you know definitely. a completely different yeah. set of sharpening for that. A question so, about this one. Well, you'll go back because um, Roger was asking in. The, with the claw shot, how much dodging and burning uh, and process time did this image take? That took about an hour, and it, and, it, and the hour was mainly spent up spent with the the pano stitching and just <clears throat> cleaning up little little areas that were a bit weird with the pano stitch, and then it was also a focus stack, so that was quite challenging. Um, so it, it took about an hour to process that, but in terms of the dodging and burning. Yeah, there's quite a bit, <clears throat> mostly on this, uh, what you're calling the claw, mostly on this area here, which was basically just an exposure adjustment layer to, to brighten up certain parts to make them a bit more um, evident in the frame. But yeah, I mean, nothing more than what I usually do. I could probably process that in 10 minutes had it not been for the focus stack of three frames. So what you do is you, you focus stack and bracket each frame in the panel. So the first thing that I do is I blend the uh, the bracketed exposures so that the dynamic range is, is all good. So that, for example, the waterfall isn't completely blown out, right? But then the shadow areas aren't completely black. So that's the first thing that I fix in each frame. Mm -hmm. And then and then I'll focus stack each one of those frames. And then once I've done that, I'll, I'll push all of those processes down to a TIFF file. So I'd end up with three TIFF files and each TIFF file has been exposure blended for dynamic range and focus stacked. And then I'll get those three TIFF files and then I, I stitch the panorama together. And then you have to go in and kind of fix any little areas. I had to, I had to distort the perspective of this because the, the original, that this waterfall, it's like an optical illusion. And again, in the video, I talk about this. This waterfall was kind of coming at such an angle that everything looked like it was tipped over. So I had to straighten everything up a little bit. And 
even doing that, you lose sharpness by by distorting your image so that it's a bit more straight. So it was actually sharper before I did all of that. I actually lost sharpness. So it just gives you an idea of of what you can what you can do with focus stacking if sharpness is important to you. Cool. And another question: Warren asks, uh, do you focus stack all your landscape images? No, I, it's a pain in the ass. I can't be bothered. <laughs> I can't honestly. It's, it's, I can't be asked with it most of the time. It's annoying, and I think <clears throat> there are times when it just you just a you just technically don't need to. You only need to focus stack your images if you're very very close to your foreground. You know, so if you focus properly, sort of in the middle distance, depending on how far your image goes. You know, like, so for example, this image, the furthest object I can see is only a hundred feet away. You know, whereas if you were taking a a picture of a, a, a a seascape where you can see islands 10 miles away, then you've got to focus differently. But in an image like this, um, you know, I had to, I had to focus stack because I was so close to those roots, you know, and there was yeah. so many elements in the frame. But if I can get away with just shooting at <clears throat> F11 or F8 and I'm not super close to my foreground, oh, that's so much easier. I, you know, like the very first shot, the, um, if we go back to that one, that's the second shot. I didn't bother focus stacking that. You don't need to, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm like 12 feet away from this this rock here. So what's the point? I can't be bothered. But I, I definitely think if you um, if you can take a shot without having to go through all of those processes, it definitely frees you up to be a bit more creative in terms of looking for other compositions. But when you're doing a shot like this, which is technical, it's it's a bit stressful because you're like you're focused on okay did I did I get that right did I get all of those focus points did I get all the brackets and then on top of doing all of that I'm filming myself doing it right. like it's a you know it's it's a hassle it really is and sometimes I fail sometimes I film myself doing a complicated shot like that and I get back and I'm like I didn't do I missed focusing on the center I, I, I ruined it you know it's that's annoying do, vlogging is very counterproductive to photography i'll tell you that much yeah i know um just doing landscape photography is hard enough and i know the amount of work that goes in to produce any kind of film a vlog or any kind of production uh, my, you know hats off to you that you achieve it in such a, a regular basis and achieve it so well and it's such a standard because it is so difficult to do and especially when typically you're on your own as well yeah and we should also point out it's free as well, you know, it's free. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll just let that one simmer there. Okay, so let's go on to the next image. So Bosch, this is my shot from uh, Alabama Hills, another one from, from the F4 road trip. Uh, <clears throat> I noticed from the numbers that that one didn't make it into Explore there, Alistair. Yeah, I'll have to have the, a word with the algorithm about that one because that is a phenomenal shot. If, that, if that's not Explore worthy, uh, I don't know what is. So, I'll but anyway, this, 500 other better pictures that day. Well, yeah. That, yes, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but th this shot here, um, I was actually filming um, with Greg, a completely different shot. And th the problem that we had is that we had one cameraman between all four of us. So I'd finished doing this little piece, this tutorial, and Greg's like, okay, I've got to go to see what Adam's doing. So off he went. So I'm just wandering around, sort of killing time. The light's still kicking off. And then I turned around and looked at this this shape here. This It was almost like an arch, this frame. And the way that it arced over this distant uh, rock here, I was just like, oh, my God, I, that is the shot I should have done five minutes ago when I had Greg. I was so annoyed. And actually, the light was better after Greg had left. I was, I was so annoyed that we couldn't have got that into, into the F4 road trip. But... What am I going to do? I'm, I'm not going to not take it, right? Of course not. And this this was actually the shot that I chose, even though I didn't film the tutorial. This is the shot that I chose to put in the post processing section of of our photography course. So you, if you want to see exactly how I process that image, uh, that's part of the course. F4roadtrip.com. But anyway, compositionally, this this is um, an example of framing. It's an example of looking at your subject, which, you know, 
really your subject is this pinnacle here. That's my main subject and kind of this ridge line. But making it more interesting by framing it with this element here, this amazing rock formation, without without this, this shot just it would just be okay, right? You know, there would probably be a bit more space to the right. It would probably kind of look like that. It'd still be an okay shot because the light was nice. But it's this frame, even if it, even though it's just a frame on one one side of the image, I feel like that's okay because it's counterbalanced with this lovely bit of light that you can see in the sky there. So that's an example of framing. And again, if you ask yourself, what am I taking a picture of? And so let's just say the answer is this really cool pinnacle here. Okay, so you've, you've got the first part of your puzzle figured out. The second thing is, how can I frame it? What is around me that I can either completely frame this thing or just you know frame half of it? And whether you're in a forest, or you know you're you're in a, a rocky uh, area like this, maybe there isn't anything, but the, the chances are there could be something if you really look for it. And sometimes they're really tiny things. Sometimes they're very very small. But again, like that very first image that I showed you, with a super wide angle lens, you can make them look huge in the frame. And so something that to your naked eye is just like a little small rock. Once you get in there with that super wide, whoa! That's now I've got a huge frame that I can really make this main subject far more interesting. So that's that's an example of framing. That's something I think if you if you can all if you shoot wide angle lenses, if you can all try and do that, it's it's gonna make your shots go from sort of an okay shot to a killer shot. Cool. There was a question from uh Mali who asked uh, why did you call it collapse of an empire? Oh he's he's looking for some hidden meaning there. <laughs> Well, you've got to call it something. How do you? Um, what do you think about titling images? It's something I've always I, struggled with. I think you should. I think you oh, should. Oh, you should, you know, but it's hard, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the reason why I call it collapse of an empire is because I, I imagined that instead of these just being, you know, rock formations that are natural, it, it, my fantasy is that it was once, you know, the, these are collapsed uh, stones that were made by uh, you know an, an ancient race of people that built these towering you know structures that were perhaps they were an advanced you know an advanced race and for whatever reason it collapsed and it all went to ruin and now what we're looking at instead of this being a natural thing these are actually constructed formations that have just through the the sands of time have been eroded to look like this that's why i called it collapse of an empire is a little fantasy of mine that I, that I like often when I you know when I'm looking at these alien landscapes often when I'm there in my mind I try and imagine an alternative reality you know perhaps I'm looking at a ruin of something that was once spectacular in a different way 50 million years ago you know it's just a little fantasy that I like to have it's a bit of fun that makes it makes it more exciting when you're there at the time yeah your crazy brain goes to crazy places when you're yeah talking of crazy places is there another video that you you like to no, to roll i think there was but i i no i just deleted it uh we'll get to it we'll get to it because okay. i know I, I know it's i know what it's going to be um <laughs> <laughs> do you want to shut, stop sharing your screen for just for a second okay and then we'll get we'll get you back to to fill shall we shall we see if I can work out the technology and dial Michael in. Yeah, let's get him in. Let's see. I, I, I've never done this midstream, so let's, uh, let's see. And then I can go for a pee. <laughs> he said he's sleeping, so let's see if we can wake him up. How do I search for someone? Let's see. Oh, I figured you were just chatting with him, like, on the side. Yeah, let's, I'm going to try and dial him in, though. Well, this is this is exciting. Maybe I should go back to sharing my screen while you figure that out. No, we're calling him. So hopefully, oh, here he comes. I think he's coming. Hello. Oh, there he is. Oh. Let me see if I can get. Hang on, I need to get him on screen. Look at that handsome hey. fella. Right. Thanks, Gavin. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm really sorry about the schedule. I know you had to book him instead. Just I, I really apologize for that. I know it's been a nuisance having to deal with him. I just, you know, I was trying to film with you guys, uh, so I just didn't have time to book this one. Uh, yeah, sorry, we would yeah. have had you on, but we were we were really fortunate to be out filming with with Michael uh, yesterday uh, to make this really cool feature on him. So that'll be that'll be exciting to see. Yeah, we, we yeah we have this this series called Smug Mug Films where we make films about some of the best photographers in the world so we're very fortunate to be working with michael on that good huh? oh, i see it's like that is it so i mean given that i've just produced this epic masterclass for your 22 followers uh do you not think i could get in on that gig and get a, get a film made about me you think you can do it without making a fart joke that's a long time to not make a fart joke, Captain. That's that's pretty low blow, Michael. I think again, again, Alistair, there's some bitterness going on here because <laughs> it's it's not f five point six, you know. He, should I just did... should I just leave and let you two battle it out here live on? No, you, well, no I think we're going to need a mediator because we've got some unresolved issues here that clearly need to come out. Um, I mean, if you want, I you know what? I can just kind of stay in the background. You can keep doing your you're doing a presentation. I fell asleep during most of it. Uh, I, but I'm sure it was interesting. People told me it was interesting so far. Um, so I can just kind of pop into the background. You guys can keep doing your thing. I just I won't. You know, I'll try. I can mute, even mute my mic. I just can observe. Yeah, try not he, to fall asleep again. You're probably just going to go off and do some uh, crunches and some like pull ups, aren't you? Eh? You got to do something during the the pandemic. You Alistair, you gotta... have you noticed how uh, chiseled and shredded Michael's looking these days? Uh, I can't see I look that closely. No. Well, I, I I'm <laughs> I'm a little bit pissed off at how handsome he's looking these days because he's like uh, he's Mister Shredded. You know, he's 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 got that he's got those chiseled cheeks and bone structure that we that I I said goodbye to several years ago and and you as well, Alistair. Um, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> this body's a temple, dude. Yeah, a temple of doom. A ruined temple. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Michael's got that chiseled. Uh, he's probably he's probably doing crunches as we speak. <laughs> well, it's better yeah, than but, pulling nasal hair, well, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Michael, don't let's not be bitter about the whole F four thing. I, I I wanted you in from the start because I knew that we'd need some talent. Um, <laughs> But uh, the other guys were just too intimidated by by your brilliance, and so you know. But I think I think we need we should we could do our own thing, Michael. We could do our own thing. We we pioneered this whole thing with the with our Milky Way made easy course, which you never True. ever promote. Uh, we, Alistair, we promoted it, we, right? We did. You know? We, we uh, threw that we, out there when we did that really amazing episode of Smug Mug Live. It's probably the best one we, that's that's happened <laughs> in the last couple of months. Uh, you know, Michael was editing Milky Way shots, and you know, I think I think we mentioned it, right? That you did a class with with Gavin. I didn't have any pre pre planned videos. I should have queued up some videos, like for the F four thing. Or that. Yeah, that would have been. They were meant to be yeah. educational stuff, but he's he's some pulled problem. a fast one there. Definitely. I think he's just he's just upset, Alistair, that he hasn't been paid yet for the Milky Way Made Easy stuff. That's all he's bothered about. You know, he's, he's just he's a bit upset about that. But you know, I've I've tried to explain. You know, residuals. You know, overheads. You know, <laughs> I, I've tried. You know, I've tried to explain that it's coming. You know, it will come. But it's just it's just so aggressive sometimes. He keeps telling me I have to wait two years. Is that you know you're you. You're from the business. You, you know this stuff. Do I? Should I? I have to wait two years to get paid from it. Does that sound right? Do I need yeah. to start talking to people? I reckon. I, I reckon all the profit that he owes you went on gas for that stupid vehicle <laughs> that they pulled <laughs> around the desert. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much did. Yeah, that was yeah. that was thirsty to say the least. Yeah. What was it getting um, like? Four miles to the gallon. That's just unbelievable. <clears throat> I don't know if it was actually that bad. I think we were exaggerating, but it was pretty horrendous. Um, which it's going to be, isn't it? Really, but anyway, that's that's the price you pay for for glory. Yeah, <laughs> so that's where your profit went, Michael, into the gas guzzler. All right, I'll contribute that. Fine. But listen, I'll do my bit. Anybody who's watching who hasn't seen 
the tutorial that these two fine gentlemen made about the Milky Way, it is by far one of the best Milky Way tutorials I've never seen. So let's <laughs> go check it out. I'll, I'll put the links. Uh, I'll put the links in the comments. <laughs> Sorry, War, Warren just typed <laughs> and said you should furlough him. <laughs> you're not getting your money because you're furloughed. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. I think Alistair, you know what would be really helpful is if is if on air right now live if you just added some links to the description of this video like to the fo road trip and to to phototripper.com or michael's site so that to direct them to buy our stuff that would be really helpful uh, for for all concerned i'm pretty sure you know if yeah. you could just do that i think i'll do that now. i think i'll have to add those links otherwise all those videos just won't make sense to anybody why why were all these random videos yeah. of, of three great photographers being played you know uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say Adam's not great. You know, he's 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 pretty great. So <laughs> let's not let's not get nasty about this. He probably so has I, like four or five more videos queued up if you want to watch them. Yeah, there, there, I think there is. So we've another got one. one. We've got one. We'll finish on. I'm sure. Yeah. How, how much longer are we going with this? Have we still got any people tuned in, or have they all left? Yeah, I think there's a there's three left. We're doing okay. Oh, uh, my, my mother's still there then. Yeah, your mum and dad. And... Uh, I think my mom's tuned in as well, so we're doing okay. Oh, um, so the demographic well, we've got. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to carry on, I can, I can carry on doing some some stuff here, or you can just show another video. Or, I was you know, really curious to hear about Michael's day yesterday, but no, maybe we'll. You do know, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in the background, let you guys do your thing. You know, don't even I'm not, I'm not even here. Okay. Not here. I, I, I'm going to play this last, 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 last video. See what, right. see what, what it is. I can gain a guess. I could probably describe it right now before I even hit the button. But here we go. In this episode of F4, shall we put, shall we put my own and start something with the words in this episode? Shall we take a bet? Any bets in the chat? Surely not. No, I don't believe it. I, I don't think you would give me five videos and not one of them <laughs> be educational. Well, I'm sure that you don't know Gavin. Sure, this one is. Right, okay, here we go. Let's see. In this episode, In this things episode. begin to fall apart. I rented this place on Airbnb, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can you hold the camera? Come this way. I'm struggling already, to be quite honest with you. Then once I post process the crap out of it, gonna look like this. Oh, Nick! Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell? <laughs> All I can hear is Adam, what the hell? It is, I, I have to put my hands up, it is funny. So. Well, it's also very educational. I mean, it, it, it is funny. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're teasing people with the trailers by putting the, the sort of entertainment stuff in. But one thing that we perhaps have not done a good job of is promoting and explaining just how much educational content there is. I'm not, I'm being serious now. Like yeah. it's, there is a wealth of educational content. Now you've got four instructors on the scene with a completely different viewpoint, explaining how they, they go about getting their shot. And that's in 10 episodes. So there's a lot of instructional information there. And if you if you also pick up the, the post-processing bundle, we show you exactly how we processed those images from the episodes. So there's a lot of educational content and we're very, very proud of it. Yeah, the tutorials are, are really good with all sincerity. And, and it's, it's very entertaining to, to watch the rest of it. And uh, I can't believe you are all still alive, to be honest, after that. Yeah, I mean, there were there were some serious fungal infections from spending time together in a, a murder box like that. You know, we've pretty much got those cleared up now. So it's a few health concerns. So, I, you know, it wasn't we're not health concerns. I thought you were going to like murder each other by the, by the end of it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that's still not on the cards. You know, that's <laughs> still an option. It, it could happen. Um, but, uh, you know, me, me and Uncle Grumpy are, are talking again. We, we're going out and we're doing shoots together again. So. You know, I think I think we're going to be good for the future. Cool, Michael. Have you paid for it and watched it yet? Oh, is he talk? I completely zoned out. Did he Sorry. say? Uh, oh, we were talking no, about I, that uh, F four thing. No, I think honestly, in 
being completely serious, I think it was a brilliant idea to bring comedy into these tutorials. Because, you know, sometimes they can get a little a little boring, a little mundane. So bringing in that entertainment aspect and having the educational aspect just makes it that much better. I think it's a really unique idea it is. That, that, that you guys came up with. And, and the amount of work that went into that, like making, making these master classes and these tutorials, it takes so much work. Like there's so many sleepless nights. I think a lot of people... I think a lot of people don't fully understand how much work goes into these videos. It's like you take a portion of your life and you dedicate it to that thing. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> it is. The, the production level is, is very high. Um, and it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's a long piece. It's many, many hours. I know just, you know, producing, you know, short vlogs or short feature films are, are, are really difficult. But I mean, this is, this is a long project. How long were you actually traveling for in that gown? It was just under a month that we were on the road. Um, and that's not even the hardest part. The hardest part was the months of editing. And you've got to bear in mind, we all edited it, all, all four of us, plus Greg as well. Yeah. We all edited it. So it, it's like how many, too many cooks spoil the broth, right? So the process of editing these videos was a logistical a absolute nightmare. So, you know, we each, we each took on two episodes because there's 10 episodes in the, in the entire thing. We each took on two episodes and then we would put it together and then we would have to submit it to the group to be approved. And we would all, if you could see how savage our feedback form got, <laughs> it, was, it was quite something to see. Maybe one day we should, we should release that to the public. Uh, that's probably a terrible idea. But... Um, <laughs> It, it was bad, and, and so we'd, we'd have to take this feedback. Of course, I would read the feedback and fix all of the things. None of the other guys would even bother. They would just do a little bit of color grading and submit and say, there you go. So you'd have to go back and now you'd have to get your feedback and put it in bold, angry red letters because they hadn't paid attention to it. And it just went on and on and on. It was such a tedious process. That That's what was the most painful thing. That's... That's why it was so hard. It took so long for us all to get to the point where we were like, okay, now now it's, you know, we're all happy with each episode, you know. Um, so as painful as it was, though, the end result is something that we're all, we're all very proud of. And, and, I, and I thank Michael for uh, his kind words there. He gets it. Like, he gets it. So Michael's just done this uh, ma Master of Visuals time-lapse photography course, which I'm hoping to get a free copy of. You know, maybe we could do a swap. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Get paid for the last one first, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, that that looks actually way more uh, way more polished than the F four road trip. I think I think uh, Michael actually got an actual film crew, a proper professional film crew. No, no offense to Greg, right? But ours was uh, ours was high production value, but still, uh, you know on a minuscule budget, whereas yeah. I think Michael's is a bit... Michael's is how we should have done our course. This is posh. Yeah. The Smug Mug films we make are super high, so high production level. Can't wait to see what we did with you yesterday, Michael. Mm. Sorry, did I mention that again? Sorry. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, actually, the, you know, you're, I, I don't think we wanted yours to be that polished, though, to be honest. It kind of fits the... It's the kind of genre, you know, the travel, the, you know, the roughing it, the kind of vlogger style. So I kind of think you got it pretty spot on with the quality. I thought the production quality of uh, the F4 thing was pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Uh, you guys did a great job. Yeah, we didn't have makeup and lights, though. Um, I just wanted when, when we do that, uh, Alistair, for, for my uh, you know, Smug Muggle video, even though I don't use Smug Muggle, I just use Flickr. Uh, but when we do do that video for Flickr, I'm hoping for a little bit more production value, you know, lights, makeup, costume, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just a suggestion. Costume, just... I can put you in a costume. Now maybe I'm interested. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm up for that, yeah. We, we could yeah. get historic about it. We could do some... I'd even wear a kilt. About it. That's what we could... I'd even wear a kilt just to, to, to please you. Mm. That'd be entertaining. I'd be entertained. We need, to, we need to check your lineage. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's probably some Scottish in there, I would think. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know where to go with that. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got such a filthy mind. <laughs> the uh, no, I was t- that's not what I was talking about. Um, the comments are are coming in thick and fast. Um, well, it's because Michael's here now. Yeah, just this all questions for Michael now, but we will have uh, Michael come back on and do another episode. If you haven't seen the first episode that Michael did on Smug Mug Live, I would recommend you go watch it on this channel. It was very educational and informative. I'd recommend you just pop out of here right now uh, and just go, you know, click it. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, if people need, you know, if they need a sleep aid, if they are struggling with insomnia, then they, they could definitely go and check that video out. I think they get what they needed from it. Not at all. You know what? I'm going to take pride in that because there's <laughs> a lot of people with sleep issues in the world, and I think I'm doing a necessary service to help yeah. those people. You know, um, so while you are taking it, at, you know, you're you're digging at me. Fine, I don't take it as a dig. Take it as no. a huge compliment. So thank you, Gavin. Oh, Appreciate you're, it. you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. Such a love fest. It's awesome. Right, I think we are kind of coming to the end of the stream today it's been really good is there anything else that you want to share with us i've played all the videos that you sent me uh with all honesty what's quite funny is in the in the comments very early on after i played some of those videos uh, i put a comment in the, sh- the chat saying hey sorry for all the promotion for f4 gavin promised me we wouldn't talk about f4 and everybody came back to you and, and defended you saying no no it's great we want to see it so i was only <laughs> joking when i said that we weren't really being that mean <laughs> no i appreciate the platform because like i said I'm, I'm not allowed to promote it on my my own channel now because the the troll hatred is just is just through the roof so i have to, I have to be sneaky about how i how i promote it so I, I tricked you into putting those videos on but no i mean if, if people are genuinely interested in the f4 road trip it's it was like a labor of love it was the biggest project i have ever worked on it's you know it's a mammoth undertaking and it, i think it is the best online photography course that, that you can even find there's nothing like it it's totally original if you're interested go to f4 the number four f4 road trip.com and you can you can read all about it and i, w- I promise i won't promote it anymore now that we've come to the end of this no, it's fine it's fine and i will put i will put the all the details in the description and you'll be able to find links to that and the the Milky Way tutorial as well because that is another great piece of work and yeah it's been good Michael thank you so much for popping in I really really appreciate it it's always good to see you someone needed to save the stream <laughs> I'm just here to help I feel like we're crossing no, the stream so here this is like you know that was fun to pop in yeah we will get you back for your own another episode with yourself and, and catch up and uh, see what you've been up to for the last few weeks Gavin since we last spoke. And then Gavin should pop into that one. Oh, you or, know I'm gonna. Oh yeah, maybe I, we should I'm, make a whole. You know what? Maybe we shouldn't. I'm scared for that. No, it's, I don't know what you're gonna prepare for that. We could make a, yeah, a, a, a regular a regular event where it's just the three of us, like you know, going off on each other and. Well, like a podcast. There's only so many insults that that me and Michael can pretend to throw at one another. I I feel like there's quite a bit of love there. And we should mention that uh, we've been, Michael and I have been chatting about getting together and doing some new vlogs and creating some new content for that Milky Way Made Easy course. But of course, it's impossible right now because the border is closed Mm -hmm. and travel restrictions are still in place. But I just want to let people know that as soon as that gets lifted and it's safe to travel again, uh, me and Michael are really excited about getting together and creating some new content, perhaps with even higher production value. So I'll just let that one sink in there. Sorry, just uh-huh. just you and Michael. Is that, is that how it is? Well, I mean, we may need uh, someone to hold the boom mic if you want to take on that job. Uh, the pay is atrocious. Um, I'm used so to we're, not, 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 we're not even going to provide food. But if you're up for that, Alistair, that's an invite I'm willing to put out there right now. I'll do it. I'll do it for food. Deal. Yeah, cool. Listen, there's lots of thank yous coming in. Thank you, everyone, for saying thank you to us. It has been such a pleasure to have both these gentlemen on, but especially to have Gavin on for for so long today. Um, Yeah, keep the questions coming in in the chat, and we will probably get to them 
afterwards. But yeah, thanks for all your shout outs. Some people saying that they've they've really enjoyed this. It's really helped them get to sleep. Well, well, we like to, <laughs> <laughs> we like to do our service. You know, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for having me on, mate. It's been a blast. I, I knew we'd have a, a bit of a chuckle here. So I just want to say. Point- Thank you for for being such a, an amazing Flickr pro. Your your feed on Flickr is incredible. The work on there is just outstanding. Um, thank you for your support of the product and you know your your desire to encourage other people to to use it. I really appreciate that. And you know, thank you for being a Flickr pro. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Flickr. It's my favorite photo sharing platform. I love it. I've actually got an interview coming out with Alistair where I, I really give him a severe grilling about Flickr and the direction it's going. So that's coming out on Sunday. So check out the Photo Tripper channel. If you want to see the tables turned oh, no. and me grilling Alistair, putting him on the spot, that is going to be worth a watch. I think I'm busy on Sunday. So. <laughs> Too late. It's out there. It's going out. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know you don't, you don't really share your work on many platforms other than really YouTube and, and Flickr and your website, right? Yeah, I mean, it goes on Facebook, but, you know, Flickr is not, you know, a social media platform to me. Flickr is where I share my images. It's where I want people to go to look at my, my images. So that's that's kind of like my portfolio site, really, is Flickr. That's its purpose to me, and, and, I, and I like how my images look on Flickr, and I like the community. Yeah. Feeling is mutual. Thank you, sir. Before we say our final goodbyes, uh, I'll just ask uh, a few little favours of those of you that are still with us. Uh, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. uh, Hit the little bell notification. That way you'll always be notified whenever another episode is released here on Smug Mug Live. If you've enjoyed uh, our chat today, give us a little thumbs up, a little like button. That really helps support us here. And, you know, I know my guests always appreciate it. So... Thank you so much. And back to the gentleman. There's, there's one comment came in here, just lots of shout outs and thank yous. And yeah, just so many great comments. So it's been a real great conversation. We were meant to do an hour. We've done nearly an hour and a half. So I'm sure we could talk all day. I know Gavin and Michael and I could talk all day. It's our favorite thing yeah. to do, really. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks for having me on, Alistair. It's, yeah. uh, it's really been your absolute pleasure to, to have me on here. And thanks for Michael. It's good to see your chiseled face again, you handsome bastard. I'm just here to help, you know. Glad I could pop in for a second. We really appreciate it. We'll thanks let you much back for to your me. to your ab crunches and your pull ups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get something right. to eat and uh, we will catch you next week. This is the last episode of the week and yeah, we've got some great content coming up. So continue to join us here on Smug Mug Live. But for just now, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye. Thanks. Bye.